Have you ever thought about starting your own business while you're still in school? Well, if so, today's video is going to be all about how to get started while you're in college. So what's going on, guys? It's Josiah, your success consultant, and today's video is about how to get started running a successful business while you're in college. So make sure that you click below to subscribe and let's hop right into it. So let me first say this. College is one of the best times to start a business because there's no better time to get started with a business than the present. I wish that I personally would have spent more time building my business while I was in college than waiting until I got out. Because when I got out of college, that's when I had my nine to five job I had to focus on. That's when I had to focus on paying off all of my student loans. That's when I was trying to be an adult and take care of all these responsibilities and that responsibility. It would have in many ways been a lot easier for me to build a business while I was in college. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, but Uzziah, you know, I'm always having to study. I got finals. I got midterms. I got papers. I got social life. How am I going to have time to start a business while in college? Well, I want to give you the honest truth and the real facts. Your life really isn't on a path to get any easier in terms of your schedule. So if you think that things are a lot very consuming now, guess what? <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but really, this is some of the best free time that you'll ever have right now to be able to do things that will last you for a long time. So with no further ado, one of the things that I want to talk about is the benefits of specifically starting a business while you're in college. See, even though I might talk about how college is not for everyone, college is for some people, and it's important for you to go to if you're willing to make the most out of it. If you're going to go to school, and you're going to, you know, rack up some student loan debt. You're going to be spending years getting this college education. You better make sure that you get something very important out of it. So in today's video, that's what we're going to talk about, how to utilize and leverage the college environment to be able to help you start up an accelerated business path. OK, so. I really want to be able to talk about how you can have three layers of leverage in a unique college environment. I think that, that would be very helpful for you, just so that way you really make a point of getting started on this today. You don't wait until you graduate. You get started on this today, okay? So what I'll first do is I'll talk about how college gives you a very good opportunity at being able to leverage your people connections while you're on the campus. So some of the main people that you can leverage while you're in college to start a business. Now, why is people leveraging important? Well, it's important for you to know how to be able to have people to build connections with because business is all about relationships. So whether these are people that are actually helping you start a business, grow a business, or become customers in your business, maybe you might find some people that will even market your business. There's a whole group of people on a college campus that would actually help your business efforts further more than if you were just, you know, at home living regular life, but you didn't have access to the same network of people that you currently have. So right now, while you're in college, it's the ideal time to actually start capitalizing on your network. And your network could consist of faculty. It can consist of friends. It might even consist of parents. So I, you know, I want to just write these top three right here. You can probably list out other specific types of people that are within your collegiate network that could go on this list. Write out the different types of people that are in your network 
and think about how in working connections and relationships with them, it could actually help your business grow faster. Okay. So I'm going to give you a prime example. You know, if you're in college right now and you're thinking about starting a business, one of the first things that I would do is I would begin building connections with faculty that was at that university to find out which of the faculty members, if any, were actually practitioners of the things that they talk about in a college class, right? So in other words, let's say that you wanted to set up a real estate business. Well, you might have faculty that might not just talk about real estate in terms of teaching the class. You might have real estate professors that are actual real estate investors, or maybe they maybe uh, co-own a real estate company with somebody else. You know, a lot of times, especially faculty members, even though some of them get a bad rep for talking about things that they've never actually done, when I went to college, there was a handful of professors that would be working at a university part-time and they would spend another amount of time actually building up their own business that was already successful. So that's what you need to start searching out while you're in college. This will be harder to do when you graduate because teachers may not feel as obligated to work with you or interact with you when you're gone from the university system. So while you are an actual student in their program, this is the ideal time to start working those connections. Tell them what you're interested in doing right? Begin to develop some type of mentor relationship with them. Even if you think about uh, Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett's mentor was Benjamin Graham, who taught him about capital investing in college. So don't think that every single billionaire or millionaire or anyone that's achieved any level of success did not go to college. You got a lot of people that have, but you got to know how to be able to work your connections depending upon where you're at, okay? So that's how I would start working in faculty. You know, you could even share with the faculty that already are experts in um, the field that you're trying to focus on getting into, and you could share with them your business plan. You could share with them your thoughts, and it'll be really good to be able to do that because you need to start getting your planning and your road mapping verified by smart people, right? It's one thing if you just go to any Joe Blow off the street and you ask about it, but you might be able to get more advanced insights if you're dealing with a person that's already known to have very high intelligence and expertise in what you're already trying to do. So this doesn't necessarily mean that if you go to college and you have this idea that professors aren't on board with, it doesn't necessarily mean not to do it because you read stories about FedEx and other companies like that that pitched their ideas while they were in college and it got rejected, but it went on to be a massive success. So this, what you're looking for validation from is not necessarily should you move forward with the idea itself, you're really just trying to check your work. You're trying to make sure that, okay, this is how something is going to play out in my head as I'm thinking about my business plan. But now you can actually bring it in front of the right person or a person that can kind of put it through a certain litmus test, okay? So we've talked long enough about faculty. Let's talk about friends. So you're going to have more relationships with people in college than you're liable to have as an adult. Think about this. When you're in college, you're constantly going to be seeing people in your classes. Some of y'all, it might be, you know, at other functions, parties. You might be seeing people, you know, in certain organizations, in certain clubs, you know, you might be seeing people in different um, extracurricular activities, whatever the case may be, right? You can pass by people during new, new orientation day. The list goes on and on forever. You're going to have more people that you're going to be in the midst of that are peers on a day-to-day -day basis in college 
than you will have as an adult. Because when you're an adult or, you know, when you graduate from college, what can happen a lot of times is, you know, you graduate from college, you go to work, but then you're working amongst a select number of people and you really don't see a fixed number of people outside of that that you form long lasting relationships with, um, maybe outside of your family and friends. That's for the average person. Not everybody's the same, but typically that's how it works in the real world. So the most opportune time for you to really be able to get a larger number of people on board with your business to be able to help is actually in college because that's when many of your relationships are the strongest. You know, one of the things that they always talk about in college is how do you take a college relationship and extend it out for a lifetime? See, some of the people that you went to college with, you know, they're going to be your friends for a long time, but a large number of people you're not really going to be keeping up with after college is done. So utilize them now while you can. Strike while the iron is hot. You can get your friends to help you, you know, maybe put a flyer of your business on a bulletin board. Maybe you can, you know, it, it barter with a friend for different things. Maybe there's something that a friend needs and in exchange you have them do something for your business. You could use a friend to help you move your business forward without necessarily having to treat them like an employee. Right. There's different little things that could be done. And just as friends, they will be willing to help. And again, it will be easier for them to help as a friend while you're in college versus when you're in the real world. And these exact same friends, they got families, they got jobs, they got other major responsibilities to fulfill. They don't have as much time to invest in you. OK, so this third portion that I want to talk about goes down to. Uh, parents. And this is not just talking about your parents. I'm talking about, well, what if you had an opportunity to have a business that maybe didn't just lend itself to people that went to your college, but parents were also interested as well. So, you know, in different businesses, you got different target markets. Some people, some businesses sell to younger crowds. Some businesses sell to older crowds. But when you look at parents here, if you're selling to an older crowd, then this might be the number one opportunity that you may have to make connections with people outside of your peer group in a way that can help you move your business forward. You know, to give you a prime example of what I'm talking about, I remember when I was in college, one of the things that I did when I was on campus was I did fundraising um, for hurricane relief. And whenever kids would, uh, you know, be in college, they would have their parents come and visit them. And I would always appeal to the parents to be able to make and give donations to support fundraisers for people that were impacted by hurricanes. As you know, a lot of times in Texas, uh, hurricanes tend to happen. And when I was going to college at Baylor University, Sikkim Bears, one of the things that I would do on a lot of those orientation days was I would use that as my main day to start interacting with parents. Now, many of these same exact people wouldn't have given me the time of day in any other walk of life. <laughs> they would not have been dealing with my black behind if they just saw me on the street, if they saw me, you know, getting out of a restaurant, if they saw me driving in my car. This was the only unique opportunity that I had to be connect, to be able to connect with certain income range demographics of people while I was in college doing this exact thing. OK, so you have endless opportunities while you're in college to be able to leverage and capitalize on your relationships with people that you may not otherwise get or would be harder to get after you graduate, okay? So let's talk about this second part. Let's talk about skills. So we've talked about how college could bring you certain people advantages in terms of building your network, but let's talk about the skill advantage that you can get while you're in college. So everybody should know the obvious one. In college, you're able to take particular courses, 
right? So don't wait until you graduate from college and say, hey, I want to start a business. Let me learn about accounting, right? Because after you graduate from college and you've already racked up so much amount of debt, you're going to have to go back to school all over again to learn the things that you should have gotten down when you were in school the very first time, right? So if you want to learn more about business, you can take an accounting class, right? Maybe you can take an entrepreneurship class. There are certain things that when it comes to the field of business, it's best for you to actually do it. But there is some textbook learning that goes along with everything that you do that could be very helpful, right? So don't think about things on two extremes. Don't think, okay, I got to be the hustler that learns everything, you know, being street smart. And don't be the bookworm that, you know, you know every bit of theory when it comes to business, but you have no idea on how to be able to do this in practice. You know, there's so many people that graduate with business, uh, you know, bachelor's degrees, MBA degrees, and none of them actually know how to start or run a business, right? So rather than just going to school and just checking a box to be able to get a piece of paper, actually dedicate yourself to the things that you need to learn, right? You can take a negotiations class depending upon the school that you're going to, right? You could maybe go and take a course on how to be able to build a website. And any course that may not be taught directly to you in that university, well, you can always take the course online. So again, while you're in an environment to learn, maximize on the areas of learning that you need to get down to start your own business. Rather than taking a bunch of random, you know, college classes that have, you know, random curriculums that's not going to mean nothing when you graduate, make sure that you're setting a path where your curriculum is actually teaching you the things that you need to know to move your business forward. If you don't ask for those things by researching it, chances are you're not going to get it because most of these degree paths are just going to, you know, just be handed to you by some college counselor that doesn't know one way or another in terms of what your business actually will look like, right? So you've got to take initiative and you've got to go to a college counselor. You've got to get, you know, in your college database course system to know, well, what classes are offered here for this subject? What can I do to learn more about business finance? What can I do to learn more about, you know, staffing and employment problems? How do I, maybe you want to learn about the labor laws, whatever the case may, maybe you want to learn about marketing, right? There's so many different things that you could learn in school that you won't learn in school all because you didn't ask to learn it. You know, as much as school gets a bad rap for things, Having been a college graduate myself, I can tell you that there are certain classes that I did find to be valuable in college, and there were some that I thought was complete fluff. And the ones that I found the most valuable were often the ones that were more extracurricular, and I had to go and search those classes out in order to gain the wisdom from it, okay? So it's not going to be spoon-fed to you. Success is not going to knock on your door. So I'm going to hand you a silver platter. You've got to go out and find it. OK, so courses. And the next thing, again, uh, projects. Right. So, you know, in colleges now, you know, they have a lot of different like business case studies or other different hands on type of projects and trainings that you can get involved in that will actually allow you to, you know, maybe get a scholarship or even get paid to be able to do the things that you actually like to do. So they have, you know, business competitions, right? Um, you know how it is. Remember when you was growing up and you had to be in these different little science fairs and things like that? Well, they still have things um, that operate on that level, even at a collegiate level of play. So you could always start up a business and you could look for different business competitions that might be in your local college. Maybe there may be a uh, organization 
that is in college on campus for people that want to be entrepreneurs. Maybe there's a startup club in your college. You got to go and search it out. But whatever is available, look for actual hands on opportunities where you can get into things and put your skills to the test and learn. And with a lot of these competitions and organizations, you can get in them all for free. You've already paid whatever money you're going to pay to be on the campus. So you need to get as much as you need to get out of it. OK, so this part is where you're going to get that kind of learned knowledge. And this is where you're going to get that actual hands on experience. It's not enough that you should just know how to be able to network and to be able to leverage people. You also have to provide people with skills, OK, whether that means their skills that you're sharing with them in the products or services that you create or when you get people to help work for you, you're able to impart them with certain skills that you learn in certain classes to be able to help your organization run better, right? And more effective. Last but not least, the thing that I wanna talk about and how you could utilize the university specifically to help you start a business, I want you to think about money, okay? You have access to certain money making opportunities in college that you don't get in other places, right? So you get that primarily when it comes to, again, scholarships, grants, contests, work study, the list goes on forever. Right. You have access to certain things while you're in college. You have access to be able to gain the things that you really need to get at a in a low risk environment. See, here's the thing. You can start a business while you're in college and you can utilize the people. You can learn the skills. You can get the money and the business could still go under. But yet, while you're in college, you still got time to be able to figure life out. But if you graduate from college and, you know, you don't know whether you're coming or going on being able to get a job, you need to start paying some bills, you're out on your own, you're trying to figure things out, it's going to be harder for you to actually get going in that fashion, okay? So maybe while you're in college, you have an opportunity while you're in school to be able to get select scholarships that are in place for people that want to specialize in business. Maybe you can get a scholarship just by letting people know that you have a business. There's so many scholarships that go untapped every single year. It's ridiculous. You know, with all the student loans that people do have to pay, a lot of those exact same students that rack up those same student loans didn't always do their full due diligence about how many scholarships and how many grants was actually afforded to them when they were trying to apply for school. A lot of people just apply to go to school, but they don't think about how many scholarships they can actually take uh, advantage of getting. OK. And again, you could get a grant. You may be able to get, you know, win a, again, a certain contest in college that will allow you to be able to have actual startup money, actual startup capital. Hell, you might win a contest that might let you hire your very first employee. You'd be very surprised some of the opportunities that are available, especially as a lot of universities are going under the gun for not actually teaching people what they need in order to thrive in real life. So if you're one of those unique people that are trying to start a business while you're in college, you may actually be able to get advantages that other college kids may not be able to get because they're willing to invest in you because you're going to be able to give back to them to show that their university program actually does help to grow entrepreneurs. So. There's so many different resources. You know, I, I, I wouldn't even honestly have put money here as much as I would have just put resources in general. You know, you, if you got things that you need to print out, use your school's library, use your school's books, use your school's, you know, events. 
use the school system for leverage so that way you don't have to start your entire business from scratch. So if you graduate from school and then you start a business, well, you might have to start making something out of nothing. You might have to use your equipment, right? Your filming camera, your resources. You might have to go and buy stuff off of Amazon. But if you're in a college environment, they've already got the tools there. They've already got the printing there. They've already got people that would be willing to let you rent the equipment that you need to conduct your business right there, okay? So for you and your homework in today's video, what I really want you to think about is who are the people that I need to be connecting with to get my business off the ground? How do I start working those connections? What are the skills that I need to be learning while I'm in college to make the most of my college experience? And what are the resources that I really need to capitalize on in order to get the most out of my college experience and my college programs? Some of you guys go to schools where they have very unique um, opportunities. You know what I mean? So with this channel being Black Men's Career, at a lot of HBCUs, I know for a fact that they do a lot of business case competitions where you and your team could walk away with cash prizes because that's an event that we actually host every year in Austin. I'm on the executive board of the National Black MBA Association in Austin. And one of the things that we do is we take HBCUs from all over the U.S. and put them all in a room to compete over a business competition, right? So it's important that you take this information down you put it into play and you get to work now on actually brainstorming how you can capitalize in each and every area. Maybe there are certain things across these three groups and focal points that I didn't list out because there's more opportunities afforded to you on a sheet of paper than was afforded to me, right? So take the time, brainstorm, write it down in these three areas, and then think about how you should get your business started while you're in college, okay? So uh, quick shout out uh, to one of my fans that was on a YouTube channel that gave me the idea of talking about starting a business in college. Thank you so much. Thank you for allowing me to have this kind of topic to speak about in today's lesson. If there's uh, others of you out there that have a specific idea about something that you want me to talk about in the next video, just leave me a comment. And I'd love to be able to do a video about it, just like I did for the brother that left this comment for me, okay? So leave a comment. Let me know what you want me to talk about. Subscribe to this channel. Make sure that you download the Empire Builder because I'm gonna be showing you how to be able to build your empire from scratch, okay? Don't forget to share this video and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Take care.